Are you bored living a mediocre life? We were too, and we know how to change that. Each week, we'll leave our comfort zones to explore a new topic, then step onto our soapboxes, a safe space to sound off on our latest adventure. Come explore with us. All opinions are welcome. This is a mindset. This is a lifestyle. This is Siren Soapbox. Welcome, fellow explorers. Today, we're going to take a moment and reflect on the podcast as we reach episode 100. Woo! Woo! Raise a glass. Well, cheers to that. (laughs) Yes. Congratulations, ladies. Awesome. Congratulations. Who was that? Who just said awesome? That voice sounded different. (laughs) It's sexy siren (laughs) Sara. No extra charge. You're welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Congratulations, ladies. Every week, we say that we are on a mission to explore beyond comfort zones. And then we dive right into the topic of the week. But what does that mean? Explore beyond comfort zones. This week, we're going to dive deeper into the nuts and bolts of the podcast. Siren Soapbox is a groundbreaking podcast centered on inspiring people to explore beyond comfort zones in order to rediscover their authentic selves towards the path of happiness. Each week, a core group of women explore a new topic and define what their comfort zone is and then push past it. This practice of reflecting, sharing, and diving deeper into a topic with a guest expert has created a beautiful community of explorers. This isn't just for people who want to summit Mount Everest, or dive the Mariana Trench? No, we believe that exploring can take place anywhere, no matter your physical or financial status. We challenge each other and our listeners to open their senses to appreciate what is around them and interact with their environment in a whole new way. Through this, we have gotten to know ourselves, each other, and people from all over the world better. Siren Soapbox was created in October of 2020 and launched on November 13th, 2020. In less than two years, we've reached over 11,000 followers on Facebook, crushing our goal of 10,000 followers in two years by a whole month, became the top 130 podcast for self-help in the UK on our 100th episode. And as of this moment, you can listen to us for a consecutive 89 hours interviewed over 50 influential people, have aired in over 42 countries, brought on 12 guest sirens, created and published both a coloring book and explore magazine, started a movie club and held an event bright class. Some of our adventures have included stand-up comedy, ghost hunting, fire eating, foraging, exploring local cuisine, becoming queen of our own lives, artist trading cards, geocaching, random acts of kindness, manifesting, meditating, several personality tests. We faced our fears, analyzed our dreams, tested the shiwi and clue cloth, discovered our DNA, explored a new career, thought like a mind reader, read the stars, studied the birds and the trees, tested beers in their breweries, talked to authors, learned what it takes to be a private investigator, played with artificial intelligence, danced, struggled to run, hosted a Viking funeral, and we're just getting started. Each siren during their soapbox today will reflect on their favorite episode, what got them out of their comfort zone the most, and lessons learned. Then we're gonna discuss what our fellow explorers have to say about the podcast, future episodes they would like to see, and as always, If at any time, if the conversation gets too intense, the safe word is mango. Go. First first up on her soapbox is Mur. First of all, I'd like to tell all of you that recording this podcast each week is something I really look forward to. And I can't think of any other way I'd rather spend this time. 
if I am having a bad day or if it was a bad week, getting to hang out with you girls makes everything feel better, even if it's just for a little while. And we've done so much over the last couple of years together. I know I've grown as a person as a result of all the things we've done for the show. Here are my top 10 favorite episodes. Episode number one, getting to know the sirens. This episode may be a little cringy to listen to now, but it's one of my favorites because it was the launch pad to what we're doing today. Episode 13, Aliens. I still want to record an episode with Dr. Stephen Greer, so that's on my uh, to-do list in the next 100 episodes. Episode number 13, Enneagrams. That's when TC, Elsie, and I all learned that we were sevens and when I learned that Jess is a fierce protector of everyone she loves. Episode 17, Chicha Changes. This episode was a turning point for us. We purposefully went on the air to tell our fans, the very few we had at the time, that we knew we were capable of doing better. And from that point forward, we did. Episode 18, Begin With Yes. That's the episode where we got to interview our very first author. Um, Episode 25, Queen of Your Own Life. I mean, that was such a fun episode and meeting Kathy and Cindy. Oh my gosh. That was just a ton of fun. Episode 73, the struggle run, Aaron was quite inspiring. Episode 72, we got to eat like vegans. Episode 96, we got to tell jokes on stage at a comedy club. And for my 10th favorite, I'm going to cheat a little bit and say that I loved all of the mystery episodes. So that was my top 10 list for you. Check those out when you have some time. And I know I'm blowing through all of my soapbox time and I haven't even scratched the surface of my favorites. Also, I changed this list about 23 times today. Mark is actually interested in listening to a reel of me saying, this is my new favorite episode over and over again. And LC saying synchronicities. (laughs) So maybe I'll have to put that together and throw it up on the Patreon. But here are some other things I've loved over the past 100 episodes. We got to interview so many authors about their books, and some of them have become our friends. We got to interview a rescue diver and learn about the meanings of our dreams. We learned about geocaching and Munzee. I discovered my Shiwi and Kula cloth. Those are two items I almost always have with me when I'm out and about now. We hosted a shark trivia and gave away prizes. We celebrated Christmas in July, which I recreated with some of my local friends, and we had a really fun afternoon connecting as a result of that. We learned how to ride a motorcycle and got to hunt for ghosts. We got to interview strangers and ask them if they're happy. That is episode 31, and that is probably the episode that got me out of my comfort zone the most. We got to dance with fire and light a Viking ship on fire. And Kyle Sheely, the guy who wrote Viking Funeral, is going to chat with me this coming week about how to become a motivational speaker as soon as my phone is fixed. (laughs) We also learned survival skills. We learned about our heritage and we have created so much art. And this list just goes on and on. I'll have more time to talk during the episode, I'm sure. So for now, Sara, I'm curious how you felt about your time with Science Soapbox. Well, I have absolutely loved being a part of the Siren Soapbox adventure. I never imagined that I would find myself getting out and doing some of the crazy fun things that we've done. And I know I never thought I would be recording YouTube videos, TikTok videos, doing Facebook live events, you know, all of the things that a confirmed introvert would rather die than ever do. So when it comes to picking my favorite episode that we've done, I have a clear winner. Obviously, it's the episode that I planned my death 100 times in order to avoid. It's a stand-up episode. I will would have bet $1 million that I would never, ever, ever, ever have done what we did that night at Go Bananas. I cannot express enough how proud I am of myself for having walked up on that stage. And I couldn't and wouldn't have done it without this amazing force called Siren Soapbox supporting me and encouraging me. And that awesome husband of mine, Bill, who came up with the insane challenge and was the support under my other wing throughout the challenge. My second favorite episode is our 99th episode, which was almost as scary, 
quite frankly, because we actually released our routines. Episodes, episodes like those where we really challenge ourselves are my favorites overall. Our outdoor adventures with Jesse's masterclass were great fun, right? Learning how to pick locks like a fab detective a la Ian Smith was another fun one. I love doing that. I think I do have a third favorite though, and that has to be my first totally nerf sided episode where we met the queens of the queen of your own life. That and the episode where we became the queens of our own lives. Those ones really started showing me how to quiet the negative self-talk, set some boundaries that were a little shaky, and I got to meet some great new friends, Kathy Kinney and Sydney, Sydney Ratzlaff. I still love finding them on their weekly Facebook Live events. I've asked Bill about his favorite episodes and he also loved the stand-up episodes, the alone episodes with Jesse and the queen of your own life episode. He too loves the episodes where we're challenging ourselves with adventures. So when I asked him about some future challenge ideas, I was a little nervous, but we should definitely look into some of them. Needless to say, many of them get us out of the house, talking to people and surely out of our comfort zones. You know, just the way a siren likes it. I'm so excited about what's in store for us over the next 100 episodes, the adventures, the amazing people we're going to meet, and all the ways that I'm going to be imagining how on earth I'm going to manage to get myself to do something else I never thought I could. So, uh, Jess, how many more times do you think I'm going to have to kick Bill's shins over the next 100 episodes? <sighs> we'll see what he has in store for us, but uh, probably a lot. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to try to get through my soapbox without crying, but I make no promises. <laughs> this experience has been amazing, emotional, exciting, uncomfortable, fun, and everything in between. When we started out 100 episodes ago as just some girlfriends chatting, I never thought it would become what it is today. It has been a wonderful journey that I feel so blessed to be part of. I have made new friends, gotten to know old ones better, and gotten to know myself more. I have learned that I want to take a motorcycle class so I can ride with Ben, that I still have a very big fear of talking in front of people and to strangers, and that I want to forage my own food, that I will never become a cave diver, and that going outside my comfort zone is scary, but in most instances, totally worth it. I have so many favorite episodes that I can't name specific moments, but I want to shout out some of my favorites overall. Episode 28, The Adventure Challenge, because it has allowed me to get closer to Ben and reminisce. Episode 37, Motorcycle Challenge, because it was so much fun, even though it was like 150 degrees outside. Shout out to Bill for running alongside us all day. Episode 64, Private Investigation, because Dr. Ian's books are so much fun, and he's so much fun to talk to and look at. Episode 92, Foraging, because it taught me more about my island and allowed me to share aloha with my neighborhood. Episode 98, 13 Lost, because the whole event was just incredible, and meeting someone involved with this incredible rescue was amazing and humbling. And finally, all of the mystery episodes, just like Mer said, <laughs> and the question episodes, because they allow us to get to know each other better. I love that I can still learn something new about my fellow sirens and myself when we do those episodes. I'm so excited to see where our next 100 episodes take us and how much more we can learn about this crazy world and our comfort zones. It's going to be an incredible ride. Elsie, can you believe that we've had 100 episodes? Wow, oh, it is surreal to look back and say we've done 100 episodes with Siren Soapbox. When you put it that way, it is so much. Listing off all of our adventures and thinking about all the people we've talked to, if you would have told me on October 1st, 2020, that we were about to embark on all of those explorations, I would not have believed you. I literally mean it when I say that every single episode is my favorite. Uh, also, hashtag, or ha shout out to Mark. Synchronicity. There you go. You can add that to your list. Uh, each one is my favorite because I get to spend it with my friends and each episode has its own unique message and lesson. 
if I had to pick, my number one favorite episode is Begin With Yes, because it was a pivotal moment in our show when we adjusted our sales, and I feel we really started to take off since then. Episodes 25, Queen of Your Own Life, and 27, The Beach House are faves because I got to talk to one of my favorite actresses, Kathy Kitty, got to meet Cindy Ratzlaff, and meet my favorite author, Mary Alice Monroe. All three of those women are amazing and inspirational. The next four are my favorite because they push me outside my comfort zone the most and in different ways. Number 36, Bobby Mackey's Spiritual Discomfort. 37, Motorcycle Adventures and 71 Dance, Possible Physical Discomfort. And 96, Stand-Up Comedy, Mental and Emotional Discomfort. Those were the most rewarding because they were the hardest. And bonus, we met Z Traveler in 37. Episode 21, Dreams, will always hold a special place in my heart because I got to connect with a childhood best friend for one last time. Episode 11, What It Takes to Be a Hero, and episode 44, Celestial Navigation, because my son and my husband were on those shows. Runners up would be 53, ADHD Lady, 73, Struggle Run, 76, Viking Funeral, 82, Watercolors, 83, Shore, Treasures, 92, Foraging, and 94, Staff Spinning, because they're some of my favorite TikTokers, and it was amazing to meet them. My favorite moments are always right after recording, and our guests are genuinely happy to be on our show. They tell us what a good time they had, and it is super surreal to hear people that I look up to tell us that what we're doing is so unique and important and we have to keep going. I can't even begin to count all the lessons that this show has taught me. Something that is constantly reminding me, however, is not to fight for control when things happen or who to have on because every single time this happens and something falls through or plans get rearranged, it always works out a million times better. This is something that took me decades in my faith to realize, to follow God's plan. Looking back over the decades, I see how the pieces fit. With the podcast, however, almost instantly, you can see the reasons why things are happening the way that they are. This reminds me to go with the flow. It's quite magical to let go and let the pieces fall into place where they should go. My other lesson is that no matter what you do, you will always create waves. So you might as well experience life outside your comfort zone and explore all that life has to offer. TC, have you always wanted to be on a podcast? I originally said yes to starting a podcast because it was a scary thrill to think of it. And I had no idea how to do it. I mean, to be clear, I had no interest in starting a podcast. I wanted to say no. And so... I said yes, and I'm glad I did. Even though I say I had no interest in starting a podcast, I do remember when I was a kid, my friend Nikki and I used to have conversations and record them as though it was a radio talk show, which sounds a lot like a podcast to me. So my favorite episodes so far, all of the mystery episodes, all of them. We might learn about coins, phrases, assumptions, our own internal motivations, or how colors affect our moods. They always make me a little nervous, maybe because I know that LC loves to push the boundaries, and I always end up surprised and understanding something in an entirely different way. Episode 18, begin with yes, for so many reasons. Paul Boynton was an amazing guest to have on the show. We felt the love. I remember how nervous we were to have an author on the show. Then we ended up chatting like old friends. This episode will always be special to me, and it is one we quote when we need a little push to keep going. This was also a new beginning for us, and it was a beautiful new beginning. Episode 28, The Adventure Challenge. I really love this book this uh, collection of adventure challenges. And it was fun to hear about how all the sirens completed this adventure. Episode 31, Are You Happy? Again, made me very nervous and uncomfortable. There's a bit of a thrill about doing something that scares you. And when you sprinkle in talking about happiness, perfection. Episode 35, Christmas in July, 
So fun to see what random things reminded the sirens of each other and why. Episode 36, Bobby Mackey's Music World, Locking Ourselves in a Haunted Room. I don't think I have to explain why I love that one. Episode 52, The Brewery Challenge. This is something I never would have done without the challenge. It was so fun to learn about a community through its brewery. I've been to so many breweries and yet never gone behind the scenes to eat the barley right out of the bag. Episode 57, Wolf Point. There really was something magical about telling an author how we would cast the characters of his book. Also, Dr. Ian, need I say more? Let's have him on again. Episode 71, Dance. Another one way out of my comfort zone and so fun. I really enjoyed being vulnerable in front of the sirens, my sister and our partners. Episode 73, Struggle Run. This episode reminded me that it's okay to struggle and that it can be good to do something you're not good at and enjoy the struggle. Episode 82, Watercolors. It was just fun. So over the last 100 episodes, what have I learned? I mean, what haven't I learned? I learned to say yes. I learned to dig deep so that you can dive deep. I learned that exploring can turn every day into something interesting and exciting. It's not about things, but experiences. You get to choose your perspective. Choose wisely. I learned that not everyone shows up, but your attitude is what really determines the value, and it will all work out. It's okay to struggle. You don't have to... You don't always have to even work toward doing something well to enjoy it. Just do it. Most importantly, say yes. So what's in store for the next 100 episodes? There's no way we can know. I kind of hope we follow in Yes Theory's footsteps and try to live in an airport for three days. But whatever we do, I know I'm about to get scared, get thrilled, and learn so much about myself, my Sister Sirens, and the world around me. Hey, Sirens. I'm curious what challenges people had for us when you chatted with them about this episode. Well, I uh, first of all, I'd like to say that um, <laughs> I barely made it through all of those soapboxes without crying. So thanks for that. But also I had several of my friends and family respond. So Mark, he wants us to make a top 10 playlist. And these would be like the top 10 songs that made you, that formed who you are. And that's difficult, I think, to limit it to just 10 songs if you're a music person. But anyway, that's the challenge in it, I guess. Tina wants us to do some sort of like shabby to chic makeover um, where we get something from a thrift store and turn it into something that you can use to decorate your home or sell it to someone else for a profit, (laughs) some sort of upcycling challenge. So Mer Shannon had a similar challenge. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. She wanted us to refinish some piece of furniture to buy something really cheap and then uh, make it new, but all within a budget. Yeah. We could totally combine those two episodes. I think very similar. Um, Nicole asked if we have actually challenged each other to explore a cave. I know that that was sort of a tag on, tag on challenge of the last, uh, of the 13 lost episode, but maybe we could actually explore a cave someday. And she asked if we had done any money saving challenges, which I know we did that subscription challenge, but I feel like we should revisit something along those lines. Um, Morgan, my niece, wants to see us volunteer somewhere. And I just want to give a shout out to my friend Brian for giving us the idea for doing a best of episode this week. Yay, Brian! (laughs) Thanks, Brian. You can blame Brian for uh, you and I crying. (laughs) It was needed. It was a great idea. Why didn't we think of that? Right. (laughs) It was (laughs) so much fun to look back. It was. I really needed Mm -hmm. this today. Sara, did you have anybody provide you with any challenges? Bill had several. Um, (laughs) No. I can't wait. 
<laughs> I can't wait to hear if he gave Sara and me the same challenges. No, so, I'm pretty sure he didn't. Bef- before you tell us what Bill said, Brian also said, or you could just ask super fan Bill if he has any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> he has one that um, is not a kind of a neat way to get um, other people involved in maybe wanting to listen to episodes. He says that we should each uh, develop our own cartoon character, draw the character, and then um, come up with the look and the name and, and develop a little background for this character, um, you know, a little story about it, and then give this picture of this cartoon character to five different people and ask these five people to write a little short story about the character. And then we write an episode where we, um, we you know, we'll each, um, I, I, I'm not, you know, we don't, I don't know all the details, but we could read all of those stories about the character and then have an episode where we pick our favorite story about that, our cartoon character and release it on the episode. And that gets at least what, five, 10, 15, I guess 25 uh, people interested in listening to that episode to see if we picked their story about that cartoon character. So that'd be an interesting one. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Hmm. Can I commission one of you ladies to make my uh, cartoon character? Because I can't draw. <laughs> nope. You got to make it yourself. Okay. My cartoon character is going to be a stick figure then. <laughs> <laughs> that feels very limiting. I feel like you can at least go to Fiverr and hire somebody for five bucks. That's true. Oh, that or... should be a challenge. We should all have to do something on Fiverr and report back. <laughs> LC, was that one of the challenges that you have? Yes. What is that? What is Fiverr? Am I, yeah, I, am I um, professing my ignorance once again, like I did about TikTok way back? Well, I'm with you, No worries. <laughs> I only know what it is because it's a platform that you can use to book voice acting gigs. But I oh, think that you can yes. commission lots of things from or Fiverr. Or sell lots of things. Yeah. yeah. So it's or, five, like the number five, and then two R's at the end. Fiverr. Do you remember our very first intro? Oh yeah, that guy created it, didn't he? From that Fiverr. Was on Fiverr. Nice. I hired him through there. That's right. But there's lots mm-hmm. you can do with it. That's a future episode. Did Bill have anything else for us, Sarah? Uh, he had several. Oh, let's hear um, All right, here's another one. Uh, put on a Santa hat, go out in public and ask random people to sing Rudolph with you while you record it on video. <laughs> Damn some, it, Bill. Oh my gosh. But, uh, some, but, substitute the lines, <laughs> but substitute the lines, Rudolph with your nose so bright, have you been drinking gin tonight? But don't tell the person you're switching the lyrics, just do it to see their reaction. <laughs> Does he want us to do this in December or like <laughs> some random time of the year? Can I it do this at specified. a liquor store? Our choice. I mean, that would be perfect now, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think we should do it with a bell to see if they can, if anyone will give us money while we're doing it. I think that would be awesome too. Um, anyway, uh, then there's the interactive scavenger hunt, which he's talked about several times, yeah. I think. Yeah. And asking the stranger for a button. Um, but I don't know. He's, he, he didn't flesh that one out very very much but he's talked about that one before and i almost feel like he sent something like that into us hasn't he maybe wait what's the interactive scavenger hunt let's go back he didn't he didn't um um he didn't really give me much detail on that one because he's got a lot more detail he's got seven other fun activities for that one he said and that really was in all caps so i'm not really sure where that one's supposed to go Um, (laughs) to my knowledge that one is a he, we have a start date that we are dedicating to the scavenger hunt. He gives us all the first hint and you go do it. And then as you do the things, then he gives you more clues or more things to find for the scavenger hunt. Wow. Which sounds really exciting. That sounds like fun. Yeah, I know, right? Like an interesting one. Yep. Yep. Um, and the other one, I almost, I'm afraid to even say it because I feel like I'm not even sure why. It's so typical, Bill. <laughs> Wear a fake mustache for an entire day, acting like everything is normal as you go throughout the day, oh trying to keep a straight face. And if someone mentions it, 
reach up and touch it and say something like, um, oh, I forgot to shave today or some <laughs> other funny comment. Um, and you don't have to wear it on a work day, but you cannot hide in the house at least seven hours out in public. But he seven hours? Up. Seven <laughs> hours? Yeah. So, That's just okay, ridiculous. well, I counter challenge Bill to wear a dress for seven hours in public. Yeah. And he has to report on how that went on the same episode. Exactly. Or even, mm -hmm. or even just a bow in his hair on top of his head. A big, bright bow. Yes. Centered top of his head. Yes. How's that going to stay on his head? Super glue? I mean, maybe. <laughs> that's up to him. Yeah. That's up to him to figure out. You can find headbands with bows on them. Yeah, for sure. Babies wear, head, like wear big ass bows every day. Yeah, that's true. I prefer that it not have a headband attached to it, but if he has to slack his way into that challenge, he can do that. Because we're not going to be putting headbands on our faces, right? No. That's right. That's right. I mean, hmm. if we even do this at all, we won't be putting headbands on our faces. <laughs> do you all want to hear more Bill, Bill challenges? Because I have yeah. my own collection. Yeah. Hit us. Hit us. All right. Um, so one... Some of them, you know, he was like, you should take a self-defense course, skydive, hang glide, cliff dive, or bungee jump, zip line. I, at which point I asked if he was trying to get us killed. Um, and then they got more fun. For example, learn poker and play in a tournament or at least at a casino table, then donate any winnings to a charity. Oh, well, that would be fun. Mm-hmm. Paint. Paint a painting of any kind and secretly hang it inside a public building or business. Report <laughs> on what happens to it after three months. Is it still there? That has Kyle Sheely vibes all over it. Oh my God. We have to do that one for sure. <laughs> yes. Run an ad on a public forum asking people to send you jokes for a month or so. Share the funniest ones on the show. Buy a tray of marigolds and a tray of tomatoes and secretly plant them in public planters. Report on what happens to them over three months. So you're going to say marijuana and not marigold. Yeah. Oh, God. I have some others, though. Like Shannon suggested that we refinish furniture, um, find something for under a certain price, and then make it new again within a budget. See how much money we can get for it or keep it in our home. Um, and then on the islands, we have carnival. And so she challenged us all to actively participate in some kind of festival, parade, or carnival that is um, popular in your area. So I could see the sirens coming back to the islands. Have you guys seen carnival costumes? Have you seen those? There, there are a lot of feathers and most of them are not Litter. most most of them are not on your body. There's very little actually covering your body. So <laughs> way out of the comfort zone. So much. Um, When's the next carnival? Also, it's every January. Oh shit. It's Christmas. It's here, it's Christmas. But almost every island in the Caribbean has a carnival and they're all at different times. So we could all go to a different island so that I'm not half naked on my own island. That would be even more fun. Um, Dino suggested that we take a coaching session on how to remember people's names or how to improve memory in general. Yes. What, what are you saying? Right? Do you feel attacked? It's a little bit attacked by that one. <laughs> and then his other suggestion was on... Uh, learn how to meditate in order to push anxiety out. And I asked him to explain that further. And he said that the guys on yes theory did that. And um, like one of them was afraid of heights. And so he did meditation to get over his fear of heights. It reminds me of a friend's episode. Meditation or hypnosis? Meditation. Shit. I want to do hypnosis too. I have to a eat couple. vegetables too. Oh my God, that would be amazing. We should, you should do that and report <laughs> back. Well, we all have to meditate or hip do hypnosis, whatever. 
Elsie, what did your people say? All right. So Connor said his favorite episode, by the way, was the one that he was in. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I couldn't get anything else out of him other than I have a question for later on. Jack has a challenge that is the Lady Power Book, which is a book on Amazon in like home maintenance. So that could be that could be interesting. I am interested uh, in that. That could be good. We still needed your woodworking too. Mm-hmm. We got so many ideas. I think I we're know. ridiculous. Uh, Jenny listens to Smartless a lot. Do you guys have you heard of that one at all? It's mm-hmm. got um, Will Arnett and oh, two other famous Hollywood actors, and they interview people each week. And it's a mystery guest. So they read the bio and then everybody has to guess who they're going to be interviewing. So basically we're going to kind of copycat that. And one of us would have a surprise guest and we would all have to guess who the guest would be based on their bio. And then I have a laundry list of episodes that I would like to see us do like the golden girls. (laughs) (laughs) I knew that was going to come up in this episode. (laughs) Yes, it was. Uh, I think each and every one of us should try and get on a radio show to promote Siren Soapbox. Yes. To get us out there locally. And I don't care if like, because me and Mert and Sarah are all kind of local. If like the three of us go on to Q102 or 107 or whatever, and then TC, you can grab Shannon and Marcy and whoever else and go on a radio show there. And Jess, we need to find more sirens on Hawaii because I know there are divers in Hawaii. Yes. And then jump onto a radio show and get us out there. Uh, Fiverr or was one of them. We would join it. We would join with you remotely on a radio show. Or not or remotely. Wow. Well. <laughs> not remotely that's true that would have to be way out there i know i gotta start planning my trips years on in advance at this point Uh, unless we start making a shit ton of money off of this podcast then i can take vacation whenever i want yes i would love that that's the next goal for the next 100 is that we write a book as a group but also we each individually write a book and self-publish so it can be anything you want and or voice act something and hmm. get yourself out there. Speed reading, echolocation. I don't want to like, I shouldn't give away everything that we're going to be doing, right? I'll save some especially, things. For especially you. not to us. I know. I'll save some things. We're going to run away <laughs> for a mystery episode. It's fun. Uh, also, I want all of us to do some sort of motivational speaking together uh which we we maybe eventually will get on his head i feel like i would fail miserably at speed reading because i tried your speed listening and i did not do so well at your speed listening that was funny oh <laughs> watch that master yeah, I didn't class like that two times I didn't like, speed i didn't like uh, speed listening at all. that helps me focus I think that's different. Speed reading is different than speed listening. Um, But I'll save some ideas for a mystery episode because apparently we need to do more of those. Yeah, they're my favorites. I want us to create a mind file. So there is this artificial intelligence. Her name is Bina48. And she has like a very realistic face. She's just a bust. But she, her artificial intelligence is based off of a woman who, who she had, being a 48 has this woman's mind file. So when you die, your loved ones can still like have conversations with you. So that's kind of creepy and fun. And I this do is that. the one I'm mangoing out of. Yeah. Elsie is like, yeah, I don't think so. I, I, think feel like, I feel like that's something out of an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. Can you have conversations with your own self before you die? Yeah. This woman talks to her all the time. 
oh, I want to do that. I'm going to have a conversation with me. There, there's some things I need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Enough. I also want to challenge us to co- eat nothing but food from our own kitchen for at least two weeks. So no dining at, out at all for two weeks. I'm you glad know, you finished that sentence. Yeah, you can go to the grocery store and no, things you like can't that. Go to your friend's house if they invite you to dinner. I'll have to think about that, Tracy. Maybe as long as it's mango home out of that one. What you bullshit? Yeah. You I did mango no, no, out I of just, that. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. <laughs> You could May- still, even no. if that were the challenge, you could eat dinner at home and go have cocktails with your friends. Oh, can I, can I, no, no. Cause I get invited. To, like if we get invited to dinner, I'm not going to say as no, long I as, can't because as long as it's like a home cooked meal. Okay. What if your friends want to come over, but bring pizza from a local restaurant but it's in your kitchen no you can invite your friends over for a home cooked meal what if i add cheese to the pizza and reheat it (laughs) (laughs) that's like my style of cooking right there (laughs) tc that's right what is this siren soapbox version of bullshit (laughs) that's what i call home cooking (laughs) I'm going to add some I have to ask some extra ben cheese to do this challenge. It's just two weeks, right, Mer? Right. I mean, calm down. Come on, yeah. <laughs> we can do that for two weeks. If I had to eat vegan, you guys can do but that's this. That's different. I, like, why would you want to do that? Why do you want to eat at home for two weeks when you have so many people to see and so much to do? I'm struggling with that one. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> I'm going to need to ask Ben if he's okay with doing this one because he does all the cooking. <laughs> you guys are whiny. <laughs> I just don't want to stay home every night for two weeks. You I got a lot to. of friends on the island. You don't have oh. to. You can eat at home and then go meet them for cocktails or bingo or diving Except or whatever. That it- gets dark here at like 6 p.m. So if you eat at home, it's nighttime. Everyone goes to bed at like 8 30. Yeah. We'll figure it out, Tracy. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't bring up my don't drink alcohol for 30 days. Now that oh, I would do mango. I would do that. <laughs> Whoa. I would do that one. I just don't want to stay home for two weeks. You don't have to stay home. You just have to eat food from your home. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, what else? We 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 did uh, no alcohol January, and I was such a in such a bad mood by the end of January. <laughs> such a bad mood. I was yeah. cooking. I was cooking dinner, cutting stuff up. <laughs> Fine with my dinner. <laughs> for those I could of you, do no alcohol for 30 days I could do that one what is what is step one of our steps to exploring outside your comfort zone be open to ideas <laughs> yeah that's important yeah. I feel like yeah and then so, say uh, yes but then in parentheses okay. it says then that then means no. Then that means that LC is going to have a digital version of herself for her loved ones to talk to. <laughs> it says, or may no. And I've exactly. got a good reason why. why. To not so, eating out? No, I'm not saying eating out. But for example, last night I had chili at Shannon's house and we sat around and chatted and ate chili and whatever. And Wednesday night, I'm going out to dinner at the yacht club. And I I just can't imagine staying home for two weeks for dinner. That's, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know that I want to do that for, because it's not out of my comfort zone. I just don't want to miss my friends. That's it. I don't think that was the point of the challenge. I think the point of the challenge is to yeah, not to isolate yourself, but just to, to save money and eat healthier at home. Yeah, I get it. But do you realize on the island, it actually does not cost savings to go to the grocery store and eat at home? Typically, I don't know. We can talk about the details. We don't have to argue about it. <laughs> but wait, the digital version of myself, I have got like moral and ethical issues with as opposed to like, I don't know. 
my friends are really important to me. I don't think it's any less of a reason. I am. If I, okay. say, if I remember when we were having friends, so much fun on say, our, our best of if 100th I, episode. Well, that went off the rails. Let's try that again. One hundred episodes and adventures is a lot. These girls you're listening to, the five sirens that are on here tonight, we're it. We don't have a team behind the scenes helping us out. We're running the entire show from the conception of the episode idea to planning it out, to scheduling, scripts, editing, promoting, everything. It's a full-time job in and of itself. And we all have full-time jobs and other responsibilities. We have been running full steam of full steam ahead for over 100 weeks. And as we were leading up to episode 100 and reading Be Amazing, written by our friend, Paul Boyton, we were reminded on page 80 and 81 that this is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Pace yourself. This story gave me an excuse to remind you how amazing happens and how much wonderful, powerful, and positive energy is set in motion when we embrace the challenges we face. So that's what we're doing tonight, embracing the challenges we face. Instead of doing things the same way we have been for the past few months, tiring ourselves out and eventually burning out, we're adjusting our sales because we believe that the meaning of Siren Soapbox and the message that gets delivered each week is important. And we wanna keep sharing that with the world. We will still be meeting once a week because we love each other, enjoy learning more about each other and the amazing gifts we have to offer. But instead of doing a challenge every week, we're gonna alternate weeks and take you, our fellow listener, behind the box, so to speak, and learn how to explore along with us. Then the next week, we'll be doing our normal format of getting on our soapbox and talking about how the challenge went. And when we can have a guest a guest expert on to dive deeper. This also gives us a chance to devote more time to prep for each guest. So many of our guests have been impressed that we each did the thing, whatever their thing is, and gave them great feedback on it. We wanna keep honoring that because that is something that makes our show special. We like to think of ourselves as exploration guides, and we want to constantly improve on how to be the best guides that we can be. Rushing each week to get a new challenge done felt like we were missing out on good conversation and lessons learned. In slowing down the process, this gives us a chance to take you along with us. You'll get to hear our knee-jerk reactions, because we're all human and not entirely open to everything. You'll get to hear us brainstorm with each other and how we can make each challenge adaptable to our needs instead of being closed-minded to what the other siren is going through. And this will give you, fellow explorer, the opportunity to experience the challenge in real time with us. This new format will be a pre-dive briefing, so to speak. We want you to participate more with us. Send us your feedback, email us at sirensoapbox at gmail.com or reach out via social media. Let us know beforehand what did and didn't work out for you. We learn and grow from each other's experiences and stories. So let's share them more. For each episode in the description of the podcast you are listening to, we'll provide the challenge for the next show and links to the materials you'll need to do it all in one place to make exploration that much easier. Bear in mind, not every single episode is as large as motorcycle adventures, or ghost hunting, or stand-up comedy. For shorter or easier challenges, those pre-dive episodes may include challenges that are weeks out and that take a little longer. For instance, we've been doing Duolingo for over 50 days, and we'll be talking about it in January. It might include separate audio from all of us or some of us as we're out in the field doing the challenge, and we might talk about our own personal long-term goals and small steps we take each week to reach our goals. So, Sirens, I'm curious. What do you think of the new direction? I'm so excited that we're still going to be getting together every single week. (laughs) Is that ridiculous? (laughs) No, I know. Me too. (laughs) Me too. Actually, I'm getting a little teary eyed thinking about this in a good way. I'm really excited about the direction because I think it's going to be, it's going to bring us closer. And I think, um, 
it's going to bring us closer to our audience too. It's going to help us reach more people potentially. I also love the idea of uh, getting to spend a little bit more time on some of these challenges so that we can really put in the effort that I think um, some of our guests deserve. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to doing some of that research and homework together because it'll make it, I think it will feel less isolated that way. We'll feel more in, included in the challenge together. So there's a lot of, a lot of conversation that goes on in the Facebook chat that, you know, we're like save for the episode or that we don't even get a chance to bring up on the episode. So lengthening it might help us with that. Or some, some challenges we don't really talk a whole lot on. So maybe it'll help us excite each other a little bit more. And I'm excited by the fact that it gives our listeners a whole week to listen to the episode and get excited about what's to come and to potentially do it alongside with us. And maybe we'll get more feedback from people because they've had an extra week too. I, I am curious on how that might work with, say, for instance, an episode where we're delving into something like a she we. That could be a little bit awkward all doing that together on a YouTube <laughs> video, but you know. <laughs> So I'm here I the- am now in the bushes on the side of the road and I'm standing up and peeing and let me tell you how that feels. So funny story about preparing for the Shiwi episode. I was in my backyard, which is pretty private. Like I have a privacy fence on one side. I have all this ridiculous honeysuckle everywhere else. So you can't really see in my backyard unless you're my neighbor taking his garbage out across the street. And he says to his wife, why is Mary pissing like a dude in her backyard? (laughs) Stop it right now. That actually happened. Where to God. (laughs) So did did you send a link to the show? (laughs) um, Oh, God. This is why. (laughs) This is why. What happened was I posted that video after I had a few cocktails and tried my shiwi outside in my backyard. I posted that video about how I just peed standing up and it was amazing. And she commented on that Facebook video. So it's out there in Facebook world. Wait, what did she say? Just what I said. Yeah. (laughs) Ed wanted to know why Mary was standing in her backyard pissing like a dude. (laughs) And were you like, and it was glorious? (laughs) Probably. Because she can. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Because the Shiwi allows you to do that. That's right. I think back to episodes though, when I was doing research and I'm just looking something up, I'm like, oh my, I can't believe. And then I would send you guys something in, in the Facebook messenger, like, Hey, did you realize this author has multiple personalities? And I think it would be so much fun if that was part of an episode. Cause that, that realization or any number of realizations that happen we don't get to share that necessarily on an episode. It'll be really fun to do the research together and mm-hmm. discover some of the things that we discover when we're all together. Speaking of, what do we have coming up that we need to research? Research or do we want to talk about next week? Oh God, are we going to Let's... prepare right now? We have a book to review. It's a children's book called A Time for Color, a book about joy. And this book was sent to us by the author, Thomas, and he's going to be on our show and we're going to talk to him about it. I'm going to go get my copy. I'll be right back. Author Thomas. Thomas Thomas who? (laughs) Penniston? (laughs) Okay. All right. So this is like conversation that people miss out on. His name is spelled P-E-N-I-S-T-E-N. So that's what we're going to ask him in our pre-show meeting. Sir, how do you pronounce your name? I feel like I just made everybody leave. Just TC's here. Which is the opposite of what happened at the comedy. (laughs) Okay, I'm back. (laughs) Oh my god. You guys are really hard. I'm sad that (laughs) I missed it. I just moved, so I'm not holding my book up right now. Are we gonna have a I know that we're reading this book. Mm Mm-hmm. Is there another challenge that we're going to do? Yeah, we should probably figure that out before we release this episode so people can follow along. Find your joy. 
It is a beautifully yes. illustrated and stirring story that reminds us to never lose wonder and gratitude for the simple joys in life. So maybe we finally do something on gratitude. <gasps> yes, we should post and we should make an I'm grateful post um, on our personal page. Maybe we post and I'm think. here's the problem. We're getting into November and everybody's going to be posting the I'm thankful post, which maybe that isn't a reason for us to not do it. It just feels like it'll be diluted because everybody's going to be like, these are the reasons I'm grateful just because Thanksgiving's coming around. Yeah, but what you focus on grows. Mm, That's true. Or we could do like a mini gratitude challenge and find ways to show gratitude like maybe with random acts of kindness or we say all the reasons why we're not grateful Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> let's do the opposite <laughs> total opposite these are the reasons oh, it's not I'm watered pissed. down <laughs> yeah. yeah that's facebook every day though <laughs> it's yeah. true yeah i'm not, I'm not gonna do that no it's a book about joy so let's figure out a way to spread joy oh um we could we could make a post about what brings uh, we could say this is what brings me joy today and then ask what brings you joy maybe that'll spark people to think about it we can post it on tiktok for one week we could tell everyone we changed our names to joy and just see how people respond (laughs) that sounds like like our actual bill cole challenge it really does oh i really want to read this book right now i need to stop (laughs) i know i was thinking the same thing Um, tc you should look up our author we'll be part of our research together right now we want to do that right now i mean we're practicing for the next 100 right (laughs) thomas peniston See if he has a YouTube video where he uh, says, hello, I'm Thomas, blah, blah, blah. Let's, and let's check it out. There maybe, he is. Maybe he says it different so we can all not giggle like three-year-olds when we say his name. Oh, but that's like half the fun. <laughs> I will say that the interaction that I've had with him on email so far has been quite pleasant. He's a very nice guy. I would hope if he I mean, he wrote a book books, about please. joy. Yeah, he wrote a book about <laughs> joy. I'm sure he's a, I just found a video oh, no. called a time for color. Thomas and Landa. That's his Houston, wife. How to tickle yourself. No, you're not even allowed. You can't do it. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I, is that going to be our name. challenge? Wait, that's the name <laughs> of the video. This sounds like a Seinfeld episode. That right, does, you, it sounds you, like a the uh, Queen is Dead episode. I, I'm just wondering what it, what site are you on exactly, TC? It's YouTube. It's YouTube. Hold on, huh. please. I, it's not. I'm gonna hey, never mind. It's, it's not, not a whole band. band. Yeah. It's not. What is it? Red, black tube. What is it that you can't? Anyway, uh, oh, wait. here we go. Are we allowed to okay. do this? Oh my God. Are we going to get demonetized? Oh wait, we're not getting paid. Yeah. We're, so, we're <laughs> still doing this for a donation to ourselves. Wait, are you sharing your screen and playing Put it us? In the chat. So we are all just watching it ourselves. You can share. Do we have to lick our own elbows too? It's Peniston. Peniston? I'm glad we oh, did the did research. You listen to it? It's Thomas Peniston. I'm glad we're doing yeah, the research. I told you. You told us it's not Peniston. Well, yeah, I. There, you guys are all like, it's Thomas. What? No, I said it right. There's one N. There should be two N's, like Pennsylvania, if it's a soft E. One N leads you to believe that it's a long E, like other words that start with P E N. Okay, so how to tickle yourself Pencil. is a podcast. Mm-hmm. It's a podcast that Thomas and Landa Peniston were guests on gotcha. for his book. Oh, that was just this year. Maybe he, when he comes on the show, he maybe will when he what his when he joins the show, <laughs> he will bring his Boston Terrier named Winston, and you can bring yes. your Winston in. 
Aww. Pumpkins. And they can be friends over Zoom. Hard for dogs to get acquainted with one another over Zoom, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Well, they can each hold their dog's butt up to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Are we sure we want to do this, ladies? <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. I feel like people are going to realize how immature we are. Oh, like they're not immature. It's not our fault that the (laughs) author has penis in his name. Mm -hmm. And only one N. It's his fault, really. Although I am curious why he didn't go with a, um, oh, what's it called when you change your name? A pen name. Pen name. Thank you. (laughs) Because you already have a pen in your name doesn't mean it's a pen name. Oh, I thought it was a peen name. (laughs) All right, good point, Sarah. Well taken. (laughs) This is what I like about learning Spanish. Spanish has rules and they follow it. When you when you learn a Spanish language, there's there aren't really silent letters, and it's the second to the last vowel that is typically accented and if not they put an accent so you know anyway i can't Hawaiian believe has 13 letters and nine of them are vowels in their alphabet and that's it hmm. and so wow. words mean a lot of different things wow hmm. and what's the hawaiian state fish humu humu nuku nuku apu a i should know that all the times i saw matt summers giving tours for people and he's like this is what the state fish is because I'd be at tide pool inevitably. <laughs> They're very pretty. How do you remember to say all of those things? I would forget halfway I through. Know. I, well, I can't, know. Can't they just call it a hookah hookah? Ha? Like that far. How, why does it have to keep going? Well, when you see it most places, they just say this is the humu trigger because it's a type of trigger fish. Oh, I like trigger fish. Um, clearly you've not gone diving in an aquarium with trigger fish where they bite no, you. No, I, I haven't. I haven't. And then oh. you get yelled at to not be a pussy. I was. Does every- and you have to try to not punch a fish. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I was in the coral tank one time. I think that was a trigger fish that like came and tried to bite my hair. Like probably yeah. bite my head. And then the diver right behind me came out of the water holding a chunk of her hair that that fish like just snipped her hair off like a whole chunk of it because it was out of the uh what out of the hood i feel like this could be a whole another episode i had a no i had a dream last night that was very triggering about all that stuff (laughs) at the aquarium oh yeah she said triggering we were talking about oh my god that's hilarious that is hilarious Anyone want to guess what is the official fish of the United States? Official fish. (laughs) Rainbow trout. No. That's a good one. Sorry. Is it a native fish? Yes. I don't know. Uh, Here's a hint. The United States flag is? Bluegill. Stars and stripes. Okay. That's one of the words. Stars and stripes fish. Striped bass. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, I, I really wanted to win that. That's why I yelled over you four times. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Where did Ohio you does not have a state fish. Oh, the Googles, the Googles told me. That's stupid. There's an article, five states that totally blew it with their state fish. And one of them's Ohio because they don't have one. <laughs> Yep, that'll do it. That'll get you on the that list. Would, that would be we boiling a, it. Yep. We have a whole river named after our mm-hmm. state. Like, why would we not have a state fish? Come on, Ohio. Because most of that river is owned by Kentucky. Sorry. <laughs> and also, Come on, you Kentucky, can't see the fish out. in that river. So, does Kentucky have um, a state fish? Um, I don't know. Alabama. I don't but know. Also, there's Lake Erie. It's I'm so, really yeah. angry about it's this. Just, now. It's says, oh, Ohio, with 75% of its northern border along Lake Erie, one would think that the walleye or big lake dwelling brown trout would be the official fish. Nope, we have no state fish. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so back to A Time for Color. We're going to read this book, and then um, we're going to 
make a post about what brings us joy, maybe we can just do like on our posting day. So just like one video for each of us. And we'll post it. The, we'll post them the week before we record. Is that doable? That sounds good. If we can all like have one record it by next Monday or something and send over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what do you call a fish with no eyes? Hey, fish. A what? <laughs> Just got it. Damn it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just like, wait, now. how would you spell that? I get it now. <laughs> F-S-H. No I. <laughs> I'm curious as to what everybody's long-term goals are. Your for own fish? personal. No, not for, I mean, it could be for a fish. I don't, I don't know what you do in your free time, but I want to know more. I want to know what everybody plans on uh, doing and reporting back on each week. Mm. Well, I mean... I feel like I'm probably going to, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure this is going to change my behavior some because we'll be working on it together, which will be nice. So I think that that'll change each week, depending on what the topic is. But what's your own personal goal? Like, I don't know, maybe being a cartoon. Oh, you mean not necessarily related to the podcast, but exactly. Gotcha. Mm. I, I do want to be a cartoon character. Um, I'm still meeting with a voice coach. I see him tomorrow, actually. Um, my front closet is completely cleaned out now so I can start turning it into a recording, um, studio, little recording space. And, um, yeah, I'm making lots of progress towards that goal, actually. And I'm pretty excited about it. I reconnect it with a friend that I haven't seen in several years on Friday. And it turns out her cousin is a voice actor and he's a cartoon character and he's a video game character and he's got lots of like little credits. So I'm going to try to get in touch with him and talk to him about his journey and I don't know, see if there's anything that see if there's any advice he has for me, that kind of thing. That's awesome. Thanks. Congrats. Is it the closet like literally over your shoulder? Yeah. The other one with all the coats on the outside because the yeah. inside is going to be a recording space. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but if you put them on the inside, it will help with sound dampening. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also a small closet. So they're going <laughs> to take up all of that space inside. And I really just want it to be me in there and my microphone. You don't want to feel like you're traveling to Narnia every mm-hmm. time you voice over. No, I don't want to have to like push the clothes aside. No. <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty cool if you ended up in Narnia. Well, that mm-hmm. would be cool. Jess, you just yeah. did a big, uh, big uh, move. Do you have any other goals? Well, right now, I, my boss is planning on retiring next year. So I am just trying to learn and absorb as much as I can at work to hopefully become her someday. And, um, but also trying to, um, I'm probably going to end up applying for a part-time job that I saw online because it's at a plus size women's clothing store, which there's only one on the Island and it will be this one that's opening in November to just make some extra income and help kind of spread the word about the struggles of plus size women um, and hopefully get debt under control so that we can have more fun island hopping and exploring our home. So nice. Like we're not like, oh my God, how are we going to pay the bills? But it would really be nice to have extra income to do the fun things. Yeah. Sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. What about you, Sarah? Um, I think um, my long-term goal right now is for Bill and I to truly figure out where it is we want to be when Ben gets into college. And once he's been in college for, you know, once he's settled there, there's really no reason for us to have this big house. And we just, we'll have conversations and sometimes it it'll be a completely different conversation from the last one when we're thinking about where it is we want to be and how we want to do it. Uh, Our most recent 
um, has us now looking at all of the school buses that we can buy and uh, renovate and drive around the country in a school bus, renovated school bus. So, you know, cool. it, it goes from living on an island to traveling around the country in a renovated school bus to, I mean, all kinds of things. So, um, you know, and it's fun to have those talks, but it would be nice to really figure out where we want to be. So I think uh, my goal is for us to get that, get a real handle on what it is that we want to do. So I'm curious, Sara, has motorcycle vagabond been put on the table as an option after retirement? Probably not on motorcycles. You can't, it's, 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 we, uh, we've worked too hard and waited too long to do anything uncomfortably. Yeah. And to me, that's not comfortable. That's, that's struggling to figure out how you're going to get your stuff packed up. That's struggling to figure out where you're going to stay, struggling to figure out how you're going to sleep. And while that may sound cool and exciting and may have been, if we have been doing this say 10 or 15 years ago, but, uh, no, nah, I want to be comfortable. <laughs> I mean, now to be clear, our school bus or whatever it is that we are going to travel around the country and is going to have a hitch and they're, we're going to be towing the motorcycles so we can go for a motorcycle ride, no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but no, it won't be on motorcycles. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. That's I think that fair. means you need to plan a trip to visit me to decide if Kauai is in the running for retirement location. I mean, it only makes sense. You have to do the research. Haven't we been talking about this, this entire episode? It's all we about the research. You have to be thorough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. You see, we'll what are you going to do? thinking about that. I mean, I have some work goals, but I can't really necessarily announce them all right now. Um, it's all very fun and exciting. I'd say my personal goals are um, to always just keep sight of the moment because I would say in the last three or four weeks, it's been a little bit of a struggle for me. Um, nothing really bad happening, just a bunch of little things happening in succession. And so even in the midst of all that, I think it's really important to keep joy front and center because you don't know what your last moment is. So I want my last moment to be joyful, whatever it is. I, I think that's my goal. Well, good. That'll be that'll really going to help with this challenge. It ties into the Thomas Penniston book. It's a book about point. joy. What about you, Elsie? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> um, I've been working on my artwork and um, that's what I was focusing on for the Be Amazing post. And I was really looking forward to doing that episode, but I guess we're going to have to wait to talk to Paul at the end of November. Um, be a better episode. I'm sure of it. That is. I'm sure there's totally some true. reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a reason. But like during that process, I applied and got accepted to an art gallery. So my art is in a gallery for sale right now. And I would love to, um, oh gosh, I don't even know what the, like get my art license somehow. So I just like Copyright give it to a company. Yeah. And then you can go in a Hobby Lobby and then you're like, that's an LC original on that folder in a notebook or t-shirt or whatever. So working on trying to do that. That's really exciting, hmm. Elsie. Congratulations on being in a gallery. Thank you. What? That's awesome. That's huge. So big. You're my only gallery I, friend. Mm -hmm. I, I sent the LC car original on my wall. That's true. Oh, Look yeah. at that. Look at that owl right Yeah, you there. all do. <laughs> I have multiple Elsie originals on my wall. Did you find your T and D yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Dino says I can't look without him. Mm. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. So that'll be a that'll be a fun game for us to play. So on their sea turtle octopus painting, I hit a D loves T somewhere on the painting that they have to find. Oh. <laughs> and then when you find it, you have to celebrate. And I don't want to hear how you celebrate. T loves the D. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and D loves the tea. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. And 
Ay, ¡Ay, no, 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 Oh, man. Well, this was a much better 100th episode. Yeah, so much say. better. <laughs> so, hey, I have I have a uh, surprise for you guys if you're up for it. Uh, okay. The, the uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember when we did Truth or Dare. It was sort of a mystery episode because we didn't. We had a, a guest fall through. So last minute, Elsie put together this team building episode and we did play Truth or Dare and we didn't release the last round of truth or dare because the episode was so long so i thought i'd play it for us tonight as sort of a happy ending to our 100th episode and since every one of us mentioned <laughs> mystery episodes as our favorite episodes what do you guys think we're gonna have to do more of those in 2023 the mystery episodes well, yeah nah. i agree my biggest uh hang up about doing mine is worrying about how to get these freaking slides up on on the zoom meeting oh we can walk you through that that's really easy yeah we can now we're now we're all looking at the world of myrrh mm-hmm. you ready is this what you look at every yeah. week oh yeah this is what i look at Whoa. every week and that makes like, sense to you like yeah look like i can tell you this right here is somebody clicking something or sometimes there's a really high-pitched one and it's somebody smacking their lips it's hilarious that's- funny that you can read like, that it's just I the audio like this is, it's like an ink blot test <laughs> <laughs> all right you ready yeah yeah okay so wait, that was tc so mer yeah what's the worst present you've wait, ever should received this, should this last be round last? Yeah. yeah 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 oh yeah it's late um i have never received a bad gift. I think every gift I've ever received has had me in mind, and that's really thoughtful. That's how I feel about that question. Very good. All right, go get your pet. That's your dare. Oh, he was right you there. Better not go grab Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Am I really doing this? Yeah. Yeah. That's right, your yeah. dare. Oh, so this must have been when Sarah was oh, working on. I know that face. I painted that oh, face. Zach. Zach. Yeah. Good little Zach and Rooney. Yeah, that's cute. What the hell is that all about? (laughs) I saw a painting that Elsie just did of Zach recently, and it is gorgeous. You did a great job, Elsie. Yeah, it was a really fun face to paint. Yeah, he's so cute. All right, Jess, what is the most surprising fact about you? Is it that public speaking is secretly your favorite thing to do? That is a uh, big negative on that Coast Rider. Is that you're secretly a type seven and adrenaline is your go-to drug? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't really have secret facts. I'm a pretty open book. Uh, I have two tailbones. Oh, that's surprising. What? That is surprising. What? Yeah. Did so anybody okay. here know that? No. 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 Very That's surprising. a surprising fact. Something you guys wouldn't know. <laughs> That's in- very interesting, Jess. Huh. I want to know more about that. Are they like side by side? Are they overlaid on top of each other? So One I in each butt cheek. Like a, a form of... <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> like a fork. I feel like, like that would make them very situation. uncomfortable, though, to sit on if, if that was the case. But no, it's just a... Um, Spina bifida is like a pretty serious condition for like babies where their spine doesn't totally enclose their spinal cord um, as they're developing. And for me, that was basically the case, but it was only just very down at the bottom where my tailbone is. So it's just essentially forked like a little devil tail, I guess. It goes with the red hair. So awesome. how did your parents, I'm assuming your parents discover this and you were young? Yeah, I'm guessing probably an x-ray from some sort of issue that I had because I have broken many bones in my life. Hmm. Can we tell you tales from now on? Yeah. Totally tales. <laughs> You're like Sonic because he's got the two tails and he's got red hair. Or it's forked like a mermaid. 
Yeah. Oh. She's a true Mer. She is the one. <laughs> so, Mer, what's your surprising fact? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. That's Hold the surprise. It. That's the surprising <laughs> fact. Uh, I think there are some surprising facts. <laughs> we'll save those for another episode. I have yeah. to lick my elbow. Yeah, you do. Let's see it, girl. <laughs> so, for those of you listening, I'm Elsie so far can, away. Cannot lick her elbow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She who knew that possible. that was who knew that was so hard yeah I don't you try I I unless you're driving in your car try look at your elbow or if you're oh, out of like, possible i don't think you can do it i don't think so i think that's one of those weird facts that people pull out like you can't kiss your own elbow or you can't lick your own elbow i was just I feel like watching something i don't know if it was an episode of big brother there's someone on some i think maybe on one of the when the contestants on Big Brother or something stupid like that that can do it. Hmm. Must have short arms. Very long. Yeah, short arms are very long tongue. Or a long neck. Double jointed or something. Mm -hmm. so, so that weird. is not me. Nope. That's an I'm easy like, question. TC, like, have you ever gotten a ticket? ticket? I have. Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> You might as well I say, mean, have you been to jail? Would um, you I've never, question? I've never been, I've never been arrested, but I've gotten a ticket. I got a ticket because I, I refused to put a license plate on the front of my orange convertible when I used to have an orange um, 350Z. And I was on my way to Michigan and I was right, like almost there in Michigan. You don't have to have a front license plate. And I bought the car from Chicago, and I think in Illinois, you also don't have to have a front license plate. So, um, yeah, I got that ticket, and I tried a lot of things to get out of it, but I paid it. And that was in Ohio. At the time, we required a front and a yeah. rear plate, and now we do not. You don't? No, nope. mm -hmm. only a rear plate now. I never did put a front license plate on that orange car, so... Now, I bought a Volkswagen from Kentucky once that didn't have the front um, plate, like the bracket, because Kentucky yeah, mine didn't, didn't work. Yeah, mine and didn't I wasn't going to add that. So I drove Same. that car around without a front license plate, too. Yep. I never got a ticket for it. It's because it wasn't an orange convertible. Ooh. It wasn't like screaming, pull me over. Mm -hmm. Here I am. Yep. The first uh, week that I had that car, I got pulled over nine times and then I started driving with my, I didn't get tickets though. Then I started driving with my um, cruise control on sometimes. I feel like that's a trick question because it could just be like, have you gotten a plane ticket before? Ooh, that was <laughs> like what I thought it first too, like our concert ticket, yeah. A concert have you ticket? gotten a concert ticket? Has anyone ever, oh, Sara is going to answer yes to this, I think. Has anyone ever traveled by train? I have. Yeah. Everyone but me. China. That's it. I'm traveling by train next. That's my next trip. Do it. You should, I'm going to buy a fucking train ticket to Chicago, and I'm going this weekend. But I didn't go far, you know? Huh, I mean. Going to Chicago. <laughs> 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 where, okay, TC, where'd you go to? From where to where? Um, I think it was like from Philadelphia to New York or something. There's lots of trains and stuff over there that you can take to different places. Jess, what about you? From Jinning to Haiyan in China. In I don't China. know how far okay. it was. <laughs> okay. Sarah? Lots of places. In Geneva, in, when we lived in Switzerland, that's how you traveled around. And when we went to Europe, um, on our Europe trip, we did a lot of train traveling in Germany and France. I traveled from New York to Florida with my mom. Oh, Whoa. It was an overnight thing, and my mom did not sleep because I was like four and she was afraid I was going to get stolen. Yeah, that's a long trip on a train. It is super yeah. long. But I think there are tickets from Cincy to Chicago. Yeah, I'm looking like, yeah. right now. There are. There are. Are you going to do it? Uh, maybe. Eat cheese. I, I got nothing Eat going cheese. on this weekend. Eat cheese when you do it eat cheese when I ride the train and drink wine. Yeah, especially the cheese part. There's like a movie where I think it's Meg Ryan is on a train and she says, I just can't seem to get enough cheese. 
And so now I just always picture people on trains eating cheese. Mm. All right. Well. My friends just went to Alaska and they were on a train and they did not eat cheese, even though I specifically made that request. People well, rude. clearly Masters. they are not as good a friend as I am because I'm going to get on the train and eat some cheese, girl. That could be our that can be our reader challenge or our listeners. <laughs> Hop on a train and eat some cheese. Eat cheese. <laughs> Get well, on a train a and train. eat some cheese. There is a train on this island. It's a it's a train left over from moving stuff around on the island when there were sugar mills here. So oh, wow. you can do a little oh. plantation tour on a train. So we maybe I'll have, have to go do that this weekend. Yeah, we don't have a train on this island. Well, that was it. It was nine minutes long. We were going to release it on Patreon. And instead we played it here for all of you. Happy 100. <laughs> Mur, did you ever end up doing that train trip? No. So not I, yet. Not yet. I haven't done it yet. I looked and there, while you can get a train ticket from the, um, oh, the union, union terminal here still has trains that run through it it's the really weird times and they, they only run like Thursday out to Chicago and like, I don't know, it's, it was, uh, and plus Amtrak's website is really difficult to use. So I couldn't like just search for all of their routes. I like had to have a destination in mind. And really, I just wanted to know where their trains go so I could pick a destination. Yeah. That's backwards. Yeah. Also well, you could use that for your, um, what's it? Cobble. Cobble. What is it called? Oh, Cotty Womple. Yeah. Just Cotty Womple. Go somewhere. Cotty Womple. Yeah. Yeah. Which we well. got to hear all about TC someday. But um, did anybody else hear all the what do do what do do during all that? Yes. What mm-hmm. was that? That what was, was TC <laughs> telling everybody that Kong is busy licking his elbow and <laughs> Godzilla sucks. <laughs> no 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 i did not say godzilla sucks that's how i interpreted it <laughs> <laughs> i totally forgot about the whole licking of the elbow thing and i brought that up in the episode tonight and then it was in this one i forgot that that jess had two tailbones i forgot that too. I did too i actually meant to ask so, my mom after that how they found out and i forgot to do that so now i'm gonna have to try to remember again and i forgot so to while we're tales. while we're listening to the episode the sound was so good that i forgot we were listening to the episode i just started talking and i almost said exactly what i said on the episode <laughs> <laughs> i was going to tell you to eat cheese on the train <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hilarious awesome. <laughs> I, also, I couldn't tell like if we were laughing at that or if we were laughing at ourselves that's because there was a point at the conversation there was a point where we like laughed in sync with our laugh on the track that we were playing <laughs> our <laughs> listeners are so lucky they're gonna get our laughter in stereo <laughs> it's a mega laugh it's a mega laugh <laughs> which reminds me of the the mind file episode you want to do mm, yeah that's gonna be awesome mm-hmm can't wait to laugh at that. Stay tuned, so, everyone. So my family has my laugh forever and ever and ever. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. That's right. <laughs> I was just at a party this past weekend and I was in a, a condo like neighborhood. And I have another friend who lives in that same neighborhood, but it's kind of far away. And he's like, Tracy, I heard you laughing last night. <laughs> He's like I couldn't hear anything else from the party, but all the way across the hills in the neighborhood, I could hear your laughter. <laughs> yeah, I take that as a compliment. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Well, does anybody have any final thoughts before we wrap up tonight? My final thoughts are: I love you, ladies, and I'm so glad that we're adjusting things and making it work for us. I love you too, and I love all of you. This is my favorite thing I do every week. I'm really excited that we're going to continue to meet every week. Same. Me too. This was Good a lot of fun. I hope everybody enjoys listening to us uh, with our research and our goofiness. <laughs> Me too. I, my um, 
my goal when we started this whole thing was to reach at least one person. And um, I, I just always want that to be my goal for every episode. It speaks to at least one person. That's a good one. I want to talk to everyone, but that didn't work out too well for us. <laughs> we've got a long list of people though. I mean, we, we do put a huge dent in everyone. <laughs> it takes a, it takes a long time to talk to everyone. It really we does. gave it our best. <laughs> we gave it our best. We're, We're still giving it our bit. best. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's leave our listeners with a challenge this week. We want you to listen to any of our episodes that you haven't heard yet or maybe re-listen to one of your favorites and then complete the challenge for that week's episode and tell us all about it by using the hashtag Siren Soapbox on all the social medias. Ladies, thank you so much for this. I am so glad that that we were able to work this out and come up with a new direction. That's, I I feel like it's going to be even better than the path that we were on. So I'm really excited about it. And thank you, fellow explorer, for listening to this episode with us tonight. If you have a challenge for us, or if when you're following along on your exploration with us, if you have any questions or advice, or if you uh, just want to share your journey with us, feel free to reach us by email, sirensoapbox at gmail.com or on all the social medias again. And until next time, dive in, stay curious, and be happy. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Siren Soapbox. And a special thank you to Sea Strings for providing our music. Snag their latest EP from iTunes today. Follow the Sirens on all the social medias and don't forget to tell your friends about us. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'll catch you next time on another episode of Siren Soapbox.